Welcome to Fire Breathing Kittens. Today is a special episode as we're here with our new member, Nasty McIntyre. Hi, Nasty. Can you describe what you look like for our listeners? Ah, uh, well, <laughs> I'm a three foot eight albino orc. And I know some people are like, oh, orcs, the big guys, the, the, the real big strong guys. Yeah, that's me. I'm big and strong. I'm just, I'm fun sized. I'm in a small package, you know. You get a lot from just all this, you know. I, I'd, I'd probably be too much for you if I was like six foot like all them other orcs. <laughs> fun size is the right size. So you're a new addition to the crayon box. What color would you be and why? Uh, I'd probably, so white because I'm albino, but like one of those one of those crayons, it's been in the box a little too long. It's kind of been smudged with all the other ones. It'd be more of an off-white and... Like, you'd be drawn with it, and sometimes you get a little bit of red, a little bit of blue. You wouldn't know exactly what you'd be going for, but it, it would be white, you know? Also, who's drawing with a white crayon? Like, what? Oh, white crayons are super important. Like, Oh, I, 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 I'm not discounting white crayons. I'm just saying I've, I've never used one. <sighs> I, does this world have TikTok videos I can share with you of how to properly apply white crayons? Probably not. But anyway, question two is... Nasty McIntyre, what are your strengths? My strengths? Well, let's see. Uh, pff, well, I'm, I'm, let me tell you, I am so smelly and stinky. And like, if you need something from a trash yard, a junk heap, I'm your man, you know? If it's there, I know it's there and I can find it in like three seconds flat. All right. If you need to find the, the, the nastiest, grossest most infected underbelly of any given town i'm your man i can find it i know where it is i can i can smell it on the wind it's it can't hide from me because it belongs to me even if i ain't never been there it's mine all right well that's a unique skill that i can't say anybody else is offering absolutely question three is nasty what are your weaknesses uh my weaknesses well You know, it's it's not a, it's kind of an odd question because it puts people on the spot. No one wants to make themselves seem like a like less than what they is. You know, uh, if I had a weakness without you know saying something silly like oh you know I'm too nice I'm just too nice to everybody. Uh, you know, I don't always like to to confront things head on. I feel like typically there's a better way to go about doing things in like a, 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 a sneaky stinky fashion you know without just I, I i don't need to stare something in the face to let it know that i'm there all right i could be hiding in the vents and they'll know i'm there they'll smell me on the wind <laughs> but yeah confrontation is not my strong suit that's all right as you said when you're in the vents you get them one way or another uh yeah <laughs> question four is nasty where did you grow up uh, I grew up in this little town in the, you know, kind of bum stick nowhere. Just, I mean, also kind of not nowhere. It, it's sort of like the suburbs, but like the little suburbs. It's a small suburb. Uh, like there's only like two or three guards for the whole area I'm in. Uh, pretty good trash heap, though. I ain't never seen a trash heap quite as homey as the one where I grew up. Uh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> There's no place like home or the trash from it, for nope. sure. <laughs> well, question five is, when you have such a nice trash heap at home, why did you want to join the Fire Breathing Kittens Guild? Uh, well, you see, there, there, there's there's this lady I met years ago, Rose McIntyre, call her Auntie. Uh, she, she, she sort of adopted me, you know, she's... Like, not, not literally, but effectively. She basically adopted me. I, I like, decided to start taking her last name because it would make things less awkward. Be like, oh, is this your son? Be like, sure, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm Nasty McIntyre. But anyway, Auntie McIntyre here, she worries about me, and I could use a little bit of extra income. Uh, she thinks I'm using it for myself, but there's no better way to live than in squalor, let me tell you. When you got nothing but the, the, the dirty newspapers and banana peels below you, that's when life is good. But 
Auntie McIntyre, she's getting up in age, you know. She she ain't got too much longer left, and I want her to enjoy it. So, you know, maybe maybe be able to give her some gifts or maybe some vacations on the side. I don't need it, but she deserves it. That is the sweetest thing I've ever heard. Oh, my god! Don't goodness. you dare tell nobody. Of course not. No, mom's the word. I got the reputation to keep up. <laughs> of course. Well, question six is, if you were given a one-minute advertisement time spot during the annual Nikimoy Fighting Tournament, what would you fill it with? How long is this? One minute, and one everybody's minute? gonna see it like the Super Bowl commercial. Oh man, I'd have to, I'd have to work myself up to it, make sure I could actually do it. But if I bet if I did some training, and when that when my my moment to shine came along, I just have a one-minute long boip. You know, just a nice, <laughs> it, yeah, mm-hmm. really show everyone what I'm about, show them that I've, I've got dedication, I got the skills, and I, I can do what you need me to do, and if you don't know what you need me to do, I'm happy to show you what I got. <laughs> oh my gosh. People would talk about it for years. <laughs> That's what I'm saying. <laughs> If for no other reason than novelty, think about it. It's like, how much did this poison pay for this? And all they did was a minute long boy. That's incredible. They didn't even say nothing. I don't know who this is. And now I need to know. <laughs> it's like they say, show, don't tell. You tell them who you are, what you're about. Like, eh, you do a one minute long boy. And they're going to want to know all that without you telling them nothing so true well question seven is nasty what do you like doing in your spare time sleeping just sitting around maybe rolling in some dirt legit question eight is what things in life are still a mystery to you uh soap i don't know why everyone what's the deal with soap why does everyone like soap so much why is everyone always saying hey nasty you really gotta bathe sometime like nah tried it once it ain't for me i i I got what i (laughs) likes you got what you likes i respect that i need you to respect me and keep that soap nope soap gone no soap i don't get soap i don't i don't know if i'll ever understand soap do you understand soap don't no, try to just, explain it to me. Yeah, I, just I, I don't care. One cent for another, really. Like, who's to say that yours is better? Right. I don't need some store-bought, manufactured scent when I can curate my own. You it's get more it. individual. Yeah, yeah. Why do you want to smell like everyone else? Yeah. Question nine. What's your annoying habit, nasty? Yeah. <laughs> Depends on who you ask. <laughs> uh, there's actually a little bit of a point of pride. You, you give me a poison, I'll figure out what annoys them. And I, I, I will be able to consistently replicate it in front of them. So the question is, what do you not like? And I will start exhibiting those traits. What annoying <laughs> habit don't I have? All right. <laughs> that like, is a I'm, not a, I'm not a bad person. <laughs> I'm not a bad poison, but I see no reason not to grate on people just a little bit, you know, just so they remember you. Yeah, and to not be aware of what irritates someone would be worse. <laughs> right. At least I'm, I am I can keep it just a little bit in the background so that you're like, oh, I hate that he's doing that, but it's not enough for me to say nothing rather than me actually doing it and you feeling the same way. Oh, I don't want to tell him he'll be embarrassed. I'm like, nah, I know what I'm doing. You can tell me when to stop and I'll stop. But if you don't tell me to stop, <laughs> I'm going to keep doing it. <laughs> Question 10. Uh, Nasty, what is the kindest act you have ever done? Um, You know, there was this, uh, this Petunia. Auntie McIntyre loves Petunias, loves them. Do not talk to her about Petunias unless you have all week. She had this prize Petunia, real big, just beginning to flower. It was going to be great. And she's trying to find a pot to put it in. And she could not find a suitable pot. This was a big Petunia. So I started scrounging things about like you do. And I started slathering here, piecing together there. And I was able to essentially home make this sort of I'm not even sure I'd call it a pot. It was more of like a weird, twisted, organic urn. But hey, it did the job. 
she was super proud of me for actually applying myself. And to this day, she's got uh, uh, the, the, this this urn with with uh, the petunia. It's still this petunia is crazy. I uh, still live in there, and it. I'm not sure how to feel about it. It's kind of interesting. It, it's kind of like a testament to her and me because like it's a stinky urn but it is a, a smelly flower too when you when you're standing next to it it just kind of cancels out it's like we're, we're good for each other you know we neutralize each other the same way my urn neutralizes her smelly petunia <laughs> it's a fragrance free workplace the petunia can fit right in because they can't oh ain't out. no work happening over <laughs> at auntie mcintyre's yeah <laughs> just what? petunia conversations all week long yeah question 11 is where would you like to visit i i don't really know i i'm down to just explore because i know there's other trash heaps out there and the best part is is some people they, i mean you could ask like hey where's the trash heap and they'd be like i don't really even think about it trash heaps just kind of happen and that's the beautiful thing is a trash heap could be right under someone's nose. They won't even know about it. You stumble into it and there's just this beautiful trash heap right there waiting to be rolled around in, picked through and see what's in there. You can tell so much about a community by what they throw away. Uh, it, it, it's fascinating, really. It's, it's fascinating. I don't know if there's any particular place I'd like to travel to, but I certainly would like to travel. That we can do. Absolutely. Future GMs, take Nasty to a faraway place that has a trash heap. Question 12 out of 15. You're approaching the end, so let's get into silly question territory. Nasty, do you like pickles? What's not to like? Long story short, yeah. <laughs> Who doesn't like pickles? And if they don't like pickles, I'm going to eat them around them all the time. <laughs> you will discover what their pet peeve is. <laughs> Crunch it nice and loud. If they don't care about that, add extra dill so they can smell it. They don't care. What... I'll find something. <laughs> Question 13. A penguin walks through that door right now wearing a sombrero. What does it say and why is it here? It probably wants to fight. Why else would a penguin come all this way in a sombrero? To I'm not, not going to fight yeah. it. Well, penguins are messed up, man. I, yeah. <laughs> uh, and I'm not. I'm not about to mess up that penguin. They they lead hard lives, and f truth of the matter is, if he wants to fight, he probably knows how, and he'll mess me up. I ain't looking to get messed up. So maybe I'd like give him a gift card I found to like a local tavern and distract him so he leaves me alone. <laughs> Alternatively, he wants to share my trash heap, and that ain't happening. I'll fight him if that's what he wants. <laughs> <laughs> That's fantastic. Okay, second to last question. Nasty McIntyre, what is one thing, or oh my gosh, what would you like remembered about you? Uh, I would want people to know that I lived deliberately, all right? I don't know if you've heard of uh, the king of the junkyard. No. It's not, it's not a, a poison or a title. It's it's like a state of being. You heard of uh, Noivana? Yeah. Like you achieve it. It's like a headspace. That's what being king of the junkyard is. It's knowing that you are living how you want to live and that people can't take it away. You know, you can take the, the king out of the junkyard, but the junkyard is still there in the king. I want people eventually to remember just that, oh man, that guy was smelly. Like there was a junkyard nestled in his heart. And I'm like, damn straight there was. <laughs> That's amazing. <laughs> oh, man. I don't know if I can convey that to other people, but I want to share that with other people. And I'm just going to be like, no, like the king of the junkyard. And they're going to be like, what are you talking about? I'm going to be like, you had to have been there. All right, question 15. Hey, have, 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 you ever, have you ever been in your room? You, you maybe been there a little too long. Like you're a little sticky, a little sweaty, and like you're a little bit disgusted with yourself, but you don't want to get up. You don't want to leave. And just like, is this my life? Am I going to accept this? I accept that every single time. That is a taste of what it's like to be king of the junkyard. Total acceptance of yourself and your lifestyle. And no one can take that from you. Precisely. Yeah. <laughs> you don't even have to be, you don't even have to be smelly. 
like I said, it's a it's a mind state. You could probably be like covered in flower petals or something nasty like that and be and still be king of the junkyard. It's just <laughs> accepting that you are where you want to be. Sorry, I interrupted you. Move on. <laughs> No, 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 you're fine. And like, even with flower petals on you, the horror. Uh, So question 15, what is, very last question, by the way, what is one message you would give to your fans? Uh, There ain't nothing wrong with being small, smelly, stinky, or uh, not what people expect of you. All right. It's, It's like... Live and try, try to be king of your own junkyard, right? No junkyard's the same. You can tell a lot about a poison by what they throw away. And being king of the junkyard is about retaining all that. You might actually still throw it away, but you know why you threw it away. You know who you are. Just, you know, like, I don't even remember the question. I was, I'm just talking now. Uh, but like, <laughs> be, be true to yourself. And if people take issue with that, like, maybe think about it. And consider how you want your junkyard to be curated. And if they ain't picking up what you want to put down, maybe there's an issue there. But if if they are picking up what you're putting down, if someone tells Nasty, hey, Nasty, I think you're annoying just a little bit. But it's kind of like a fly buzzing around me at all times. Like, yeah, I know that's on purpose. That's who I am. If you don't want a fly buzzing around you, don't hang around Nasty. Like, all right. They might perceive that as a negative trait, but I'm doing it on purpose. That's who I am, right? So just, you know, do what you do. Live deliberately. Be, be intentional. If, if, if you like something and someone's got a problem with that, own it. Tell them you got a problem with them. Or at the very least, you got a problem with them having a problem with you. You might live in, here we go. Here's a good way to condense it. Even if you live in everybody else's trash, don't take shit from nobody. Dang. You heard it here, folks. Even if you live in other people's trash, don't take shit from nobody. Thank you for joining us, Nasty. Oh, absolutely. And we'll see you in an upcoming adventure. Goodbye. Goodbye.